Piers is here now, looking mm -hmm. right in that guy's eyes. Mm -hmm. Was it chilling? Was it frightening? Were you know, you I've, I've sat with a lot of killers. I know, I know. Uh, you know, with the Killer Women series and Serial Killer and so on, and very dangerous people. Mm. I've never felt quite as as uh, chilled in a bad way. Wow. Yeah. I felt like I was in this sort of psychological combat with this guy. Uh, but ultimately, it's a, it's a story of a woman and her unconditional love for her child. How far does it go? I mean, it's the most extraordinary it's test of parental that. love imaginable. It really is. It was really interesting what she said, because also I was watching the interview you did with her earlier mm. on this morning, and she compared both of her children, because her son that she has now, her young son, has got a heart condition. Mm. And she says, well, I can't hate him for having a heart condition. I can't hate my other son for having a mental health condition. I don't know if I could have the strength to do I that. I think she's remarkable. I don't think... I mean, she's also ideas. intelligent, and yeah, she's, she's very, you know, she... But she has all the empathy Mm. Uh, and the sense of shame and guilt that normal people have about stuff, which he's incapable Doesn't of having. It. You know, I could just tell the shutters were coming down when I tried to ask him if he loves his mother, given the extraordinary love she's shown him. Mm. He wasn't really able to articulate. Psychopaths are not able to show that kind of emotion or to feel it. They yes. don't feel it. No. They can pretend they do, but mm. they don't. And they do, they do pretend. I mean, we've seen it, we've seen it on screen, Hannibal yeah. Lecter. And it seemed like that. It it's the nearest like thing to that kind of thing yeah. where, you know, when Jodie Foster goes in uh -huh. and there's that thing where you're talking to this psych psychological sort of uh, extremely evil genius. Mm. But in this case, you know, is he pure evil or is he, as she believes, is he just mentally damaged to the extent that he can't feel the way that normal people do? The experts will say that is clear... Psychopath. Jeez, Piers. Uh, yeah. uh, it's fascinating, though. It's I wasn't allowed in the same room as him. You weren't? Now, that's really interesting. First because time. First time ever, yeah. You know, I've interviewed serial killers who've killed yeah. 12, 20 people in some cases. But he's too dangerous. And I'd be two feet away like this. Yeah. yeah. He was considered too dangerous to be in the same vicinity as he'd is be it, behind a reinforced glass. Was that a danger physically or mentally? Were they worried that he would get into your head or were they I more worried? They were, they were more worried about him just, he's so cunning and manipulative and smart that right. he might just use that opportunity to commit another murder if he meets Jeez. another human being on the outside. Um, and so, you know, it was very, very weird experience. I mean, and normally I feel quite comfortable in those environments. You think you feel safe. This guy, there was something about him that was really dangerous mm. and menacing because I think he was just so clearly so intelligent. He just felt like he was gaming everything. And this poor mother, you know, she's got to live with this thing of this guy coming out that she's if given he gets her love. It, surely to God, he's not going to get out. He will get out. Will he? He, he will get Even out by the, time, by the time he's 50. He will be automatically released wow. because he was a juvenile when he committed the crime. Like, why are you linking you... me to no, the word psychopath? I'm not. I'm only saying <laughs> that you did a test and you passed with flying colours. You is not. Well, not exactly flying colours. They, they ended up describing me as a good psychopath. Oh, that's nice. Then. I have some psychopathic <laughs> tendencies, but, they're, but, but they're not all. Benign, perhaps. Yeah. But you know what? There has to be a psychopath, a psychopathic tendencies. You electrocuted Susanna yesterday. She you gave her, it. No, she did not deserve it. And she it was did. mean and horrid. Your TV wife. Oh. And it was sore. <laughs> it was painful. <laughs> you horrible man. Can I just put this into some perspective? A, you can buy these watches on Amazon. Right. And they're designed if you have a bad habit, right? If you like you're eating too much fast food or you're smoking right. or whatever, you get a friend and you have an iPad, the friend has, and they press a button which zaps you in little shocks, right? right? Well, her bad habit is interrupted me too much oh, on Good Morning Britain. So I said to her, every time you interrupt me, I'm going to give you a little electric shock. And it has stopped her interrupting me. It's been yeah. very effective. But she didn't interrupt you that much, Piers Morgan. <laughs> no, they never get a chance. They keep you on your toes, those women, don't they? They do. I mean, you know... It's you know two, your place, Piers Morgan. Two wives is kind of utopia for many women. Well, it's, I think it's, <laughs> you've got By real... the way, my harem is, you know, it's not do completely it's full. It's, 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 it's not completely full, all right. Is there space? There is space <laughs> in the harem. Behave yourself. For a little Scottish beauty. You have got a really thick skin. Why are you I don't blushing? Know. I'm not blushing, sorry. <laughs> uh, you've got a real thick skin, though. I don't know how you do it, because, you know, when people are mean, I, mm. I, I really take it to heart, and most people do. Mm. Does anything ever get in there? Not or really. do you just, no, you just Not deflect? the things people imagine. It's like, it's like Twitter, for example, yeah. you know. I'm very active on Twitter, but I like all the rough and tumble. If some, you know, spotty geek in a dungeon wants to, you know, call me abusive names, I don't care. Right. So long as, gloriously, if he can't spell. And, and I can then correct, correct the spelling. I know, I do and then my favourite thing on Twitter is when you have you know, a tweet deleted and then gloriously, minutes later, account deleted, <laughs> where I've literally had them vaporised because my six-point 
six million followers go after them so badly You'd they can't me. exist anymore, yeah, <laughs> which is probably quite psychopathic of me. Um, <laughs> Maybe just, just a wee tiny bit. I, I think it comes down, we just had a chat with Aunt Middleton. It's really interesting, this thing about mental resilience yeah. and mental health, everything. You know, it's a really big issue of our time. But I feel really strongly about this, that we all need to be a bit more thick-skinned. We all need to develop a, a, a core insiders which can deal with normal mm. life stuff. And I don't mean... You know, terrible things no, no, like no, the no. story of this, this woman. Um, I just mean normal life stuff. You know, it's important to remind young people we are living in times which are the safest in recorded history, fewer wars in, in recorded mm. history, fewer people being killed, people are living longer, they're living healthier. There are lots of things to be positive about with this generation, and yet we seem to be having this explosion of anxiety and depression and so on. And I don't think we're going about it quite the right way, and I think we need to get more of the Aunt Middleton spirit, mm. which is, you know, this guy's in the SBS for 15 years, he's stared death in the face. How do you make young people simply a little bit more thick-skinned no, about I hear you life, saying, I normal think, life? Yeah, normal life, that's the thing, more yeah. support with normal life. Will you interview <laughs> Boris Johnson for me, please? Do you know what? We, we put it directly to him at a party yesterday, Pip Thompson from Good Morning Britain put it to him. He's on record, he, he said, As he said you I'm do. not Piers, and I'll definitely do an interview with Piers. Well, OK, let's hold him to that promise, Please and then do. let's hold his feet to the fire, because if Boris wants to be Prime Minister of his country, he's got to answer tough questions and he's yep. got to stop being so slippery. Why, frankly, should we listen to him about Can his promises on Brexit? And so I say, look, Boris, come on Good Morning Britain, let's have a good half-hour rough and tumble, be straight with the public and let them actually see what you're really like as a leader, but stop hiding and stop being so squirmy about simple things like a picture, because if I can't trust you on that, I can't trust you to lead the country. Exactly. P you, you should be PM. PM for PM. PM for PM. Would you be my campaign manager? You betcha. <laughs> We'd have fun. <laughs> Having picnics. <laughs> you know what? Photographs. You would be brilliant in my cabinet. After your, after your political tirades recently. <laughs> I'm just fed up. The way you up. took down McVeigh and the and others. I'm fed up with a whole lot of You are. You're steaming with rage. The whole... I am. I am. I'm angry. Yeah. I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to drink like anymore. I like you like this. We've I had know, this conversation. That's what worries me and you're quite close. <laughs> you are brilliant. Thank you for Thank coming you. in. And, and you are brilliant too. God bless you. And Psychopath with Piers Morgan on ITV tomorrow night. Tomorrow night at nine o'clock. That is not to be missed. Thank you, Piers. Lovely to see you.